tonight on Elon Local News. The town of Elon's social district officially launches this week. Find out where and when you can drink downtown. Elon senior staff member Jeff Stein is leaving the university. Details on his next steps ahead. Campus is a special place for one Elon community member. She shares her special connection and childhood memories. Those stories and more. Elon Local News starts now. Live from the Jane and Brian Williams studio at Elon University School of Communications, you're watching Elon Local News. In just a matter of days, the town of Elon is set to open the first drink outdoor drinking district in Alamance County. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Anne-Marie Bonner. And I'm Mason Willett. Elon Social District will officially launch this Friday, allowing open containers of alcohol in a small portion of downtown Elon. Our Annie Tifo joins us just outside of our studio. Tell us more. Annie? Thanks, Anne Marie and Mason. Music to Dine To is set to kick off this Friday for the spring and summer season, as well as the Elon Social District, which allows people to possess alcohol who are of drinking age in designated cups that look like this with the official Social District logo opposed to regular old cups that look like this, which will not be allowed to possess alcohol. For the past month, Elon has been soft launching the social district with signs and posters around town. I talked to town council members about what all these signs mean. Starting this week, the social district allows those over 21 to drink alcohol outside in designated areas. It extends along Williamson Avenue, wrapping around to include the sidewalk areas by Pandora's Prize and McGurk's. Town of Elon Mayor Emily Sharp says the district has specific signs to let people know what it is and what parts of downtown it includes. The decision to create the district came after North Carolina's COVID-19 laws expanded outdoor dining and alcohol services. Something that we could take advantage of for two years and then all of a sudden it was like, wait, we can't do it. And so now I'm excited. I think it has been a really great opportunity for our businesses to expand their dining services in some way, shape, or form, and this just adds on to that. Downtown Development Director Jill Weston says it was important for the town to start the Social District project while downtown was still undergoing other expansion. We didn't want to lose expansion. that momentum. We still wanted to allow that socializing and um, allow the over 21s to enjoy uh, drinking outside in our dining areas and at our events. Weston says the most important part of developing a social district is safety. And you know, the rules apply as they have always applied. It's just basically expanding from an outdoor patio to our sidewalk area that's on our map and the dining areas and nothing beyond that would be a, like they would normally get a citation if they were outside of a, a, an area that's allowing alcohol. Weston says she's excited that the town is offering this to the community. We're really proud of the fact that we are the first town or city in Alamance County to launch a social district. I'm really proud of that. For those who do not know, this is where the social district's designated areas will be, as well as some signs that you may see where you can take alcohol in or may not. Ahead of the kickoff, I spoke with students and parents about their opinions and concerns regarding the social district. It's pretty easy to just like get drunk on your own and then go places without having to carry the containers. So it's cool that they're giving us like a little bit more freedom in that way. We'll be inc encouraging students to stay more on campus than um, going out and possibly endangering themselves. I'll be interested to see like if people try to leave the block, like how that is like held accountable for, like how, how that works. There'll be officers regulating it. And so it's, you know, so I think it's a good way for students to be Kind of watched. <laughs> I'm curious like how far people like want to like wander down the block with an open container um, as opposed to just like sitting in the bar at like McGurk's or something. Obviously we don't want anybody to get super hurt or intoxicated so as long as it's regulated it should be fine. The social district is set to be open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week. Live from the Vila Town, I'm Annie Tifo. Back to you in the studio.
Thank you so much, Annie. Also this week, the Elon Farmers Market is set to start back up, but under new leadership. The town has hired a new Farmers Market manager who will run the weekly event. In previous years, a group called Healthy Alamance ran the market with help from a grant. Now the town is taking over the market. The Farmers Market will take place in the Elon Community Church parking lot every Thursday through November 9th from 3 to 6 p.m. Today, there's a new bill in North Carolina that would make marijuana legal. Democrats introduced the bill in the House. Supporters say legalizing cannabis would allow the state to regulate the recreational drug. However, the bill faces an uphill battle. Republicans now hold a supermajority in both houses of the General Assembly. That means the bill would have a tough time getting to Democratic Governor Roy Cooper's desk. If you're a senior looking to get tickets for commencement, today is the last day to reserve tickets. Students are able to get five tickets in all. If tickets still remain after today, a second round of reservations will open on Wednesday. The two commencement ceremonies are set for 9 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. on May 19th in Shar Center. And as seniors are getting ready to graduate and move on from Elon, so is one senior staff member. Vice President for Strategic Initiatives and Partnerships Jeff Stein is set to leave the university on July 1st. He's set to become the 10th president of Mary Baldwin University in Virginia. Stein is now the fourth senior staff member in the last two years to leave Elon and head off to lead another university. This comes after a more than 20-year tenure at Elon. During this time, Stein implemented the university's 10-year strategic plan and oversaw the university's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. It is still unclear who will replace Stein. Stein is an influential member of the Jewish community here at Elon. Senior Stephanie Melogenic has worked with Stein through Elon Hillel and says Stein will surely be missed. I'm also leaving, so I feel like we're graduating together. Um, but at the same time, I do think it'll be definitely a loss for Elon and the Jewish community. So I really hope that um, Elon finds someone as great as Jeff Stein to come and take his place. Director of Jewish Life Betsy Polk says that when she thinks of the history of Jewish life at Elon, she thinks of Stein. Jeff is like really responsible in so many ways for bringing life and vibrancy to Elon's Jewish community. Both say Stein has been a core part of integrating Judaism into the Elon community. Still to come, tonight on Elon Local News, a student now using a personal health struggle as a podcast platform. A look at spring in North Carolina and what to expect for the weather when we return. You're watching Elon Local News. Join us now with a live look at the weather on Citrone Plaza tonight is our Jenna Mandarioli. Jenna, good evening to you. Good evening, Mason and Anne-Marie. It was definitely a bit windy but sunny today with temperatures in the mid-60s. But believe it or not, this is the coldest weather we're going to see all week. Here's your Phoenix five-day forecast. Tomorrow, the sun will stick around and it's here to stay with temperatures in the mid-70s. By Wednesday, we'll see highs in the mid-80s and this will last through Thursday and Friday. By the weekend, though, be prepared for a chance of rain. Saturday's temperatures will stay high, but some showers may join in the mix. Back to you in the studio. Thank you so much. Jenna Mandarelli, thank you. Tonight, an Elon Jr. is fighting the stigma of mental health in the black community with a new podcast. It's a personal story for Noah Dyson. His personal struggle with bipolar disorder inspired him to start a podcast called The Love Catalyst Zone. Dyson says he believes sharing his experience will help others open up. My first desire for the show is to really help people, make people feel less alone, make people feel that, you know, that they are more than just their diagnosis and that healing and happiness and love is possible. 
And Dyson isn't alone. An American Psychological Association study showed nearly 60% of college students struggled with at least one mental health issue last year. Dyson says he wants to create spaces for empathy and action even after he graduates. He says in the future he plans to open a mental health hospital and be a clinical psychologist. I'm sick of us all pretending like everything's okay when it's, things are not okay in our society. And I have a, and I believe we all play a part in making it better. And this is my, my way to do so. To learn more about Dyson's podcast, visit our website, elonnewsnetwork.com. When you go to a show at Elon Center for the Arts, you might see white buses bringing in residents from local senior assisting living centers to see shows. For one retirement community and one of its members, these visits to campus are extra special. Our Jenna Mendy Orley has more. Just five minutes down the road from Elon University's campus, Blakey Hall is a local retirement community. The assisted living program provides its residents with creative activities, including trips to Elon's campus to see shows at McCrary Theater. Activity director Taylor Lowe says she enjoys organizing events and discovering what the residents love. They feel like they're just probably 25 again, going out somewhere and having fun, and it's, ni it's nice to see them enjoy their lives. But for Blakey Hall resident Annie Maynard, these trips to campus have a deeper meaning. Seeing shows and walking under the Elon Oaks are all things she has done since she was a little girl. That college campus, the wall, I used, I used to go up there when I was a little girl and get on the brick on the wall and walk it, pretending that I was a ballerina. <laughs> Maynard says growing up in Elon was unique. Because the town was so small, everyone found out everything. I loved it because I knew everybody and I knew what to expect if I did anything that I was not supposed to do. Because would, it would get back to my parents and I didn't want to embarrass them. Maynard still lives in Elon through Blakey experience. Hall, but she says nothing brings her more joy than reflecting on her childhood memories spent on campus. Maynard has dementia, but her days growing up are the ones she remembers the most. Among those memories is finding her husband on the Elon football field. That's Maynard really married cool. former Elon football player mm -hmm. Chuck Maynard, making the football team another community for her. My husband played football in Elon, and um, that's how I got to know him real well, was, you know, flirting with the football players. He ended up and we got married, and so I was, I was everybody's little girl on the football team. And uh, they came to me for advice. Although the football stadium and other parts of campus have changed since Maynard's childhood, her memories of Elon will always stick with her. I'm an Elon girl, through and through. Jenna Mandarioli, Elon Local News. Maynard, now almost 87 years old, has lived in Elon for all but 10 years of her life. And tonight, one Elon organization is closing the curtain on its first year on campus. Just six months ago, Elon Muses recently began its journey as a show choir and held its first ever concert on Saturday. Elon sophomore and organization vice president, Holly Kogan, says she's excited to help grow the organization next year. I have never met a more welcoming, loving group of women in my life. Um, for next year, we're opening auditions to men as well, but right now, this year, with all the girls, it was just such a great sisterhood, and I just love everyone so much. Elon Muses will be holding auditions in the fall. As mentioned, anyone is welcome to try out. April is Parkinson's Awareness Month, and an Elon sophomore is br helping bring awareness to the disease. Ari Tobriner started an organization on campus this year, Pancakes for Parkinson's. It raised money for the Michael J. Fox Foundation. He says he is a huge fan of the movie star and even met him a few years ago. But the disease is also personal. Turbinder lost his great aunt to the disease and every day he wears a bracelet in honor. He says he hopes there will be a long-term effect. I, I don't care about fr like fraternity sorority. Like, uh, I was like, I, was like I, I respect it and I get it, but at the same time, it's not for every student on campus. This is something an event that literally as you're walking by from class, you can just go to and just participate in. I, I'd love for two years from now to just have someone else be in, be in, charge, of, in charge of it like I am in, in my position, just making events and doing it. I'd be very happy with this to be my legacy. For more details on the story, make sure to grab a copy of The Pendulum on Wednesday. And Elon Sr. is aiming high after graduation. Her Air Force journey is up next. A group of parent of Elon parents are hitting a home run in what they say is more ways than one. You are watching Elon Local News.
For Elon's ROTC students, class is held in Greensboro at North Carolina A&T University. One Air Force cadet is getting ready to take flight after Elon. Our Joseph Naveen and Caroline Donahue have more. Within the last two years, I've held four leadership roles. Um, I've been the wing commander, which is like in charge of the entire wing. I did that last semester. And that just basically means that all of responsibilities, um, schedules, making sure that everything runs smoothly, um, checking in on everybody. As a cadet in Elon's ROTC program, senior Aaron Ponte navigates challenges between leadership positions and gender bias. She aims high to be a part of the next generation of Air Force leaders. I've definitely had my fair share of moments where I have to think to myself, like, are people looking at what I'm doing and saying, like, oh, Cadet Ponte got this because she's a woman? Ponte looks up to other women in the Air Force who had similar experiences navigating this male-dominated military branch. They all have said that they've had moments where they've had to deal with gender bias or problems because they've been a woman, where they've noticed distreatment or, um, like, things not necessarily seeming as equal or feeling like people are looking at them different than they look at their male counterparts. Nancy Harris, an associate dean at Elon, helps Ponte and other ROTC leaders help find a place within the program. I mean, the program itself um, sort of instills in you self-confidence, self-reliance, um, the ability to communicate and to make things happen. As Ponte's time at Elon comes to a close, she will join the Air Force upon her graduation in May. And I'm really proud of the work that I've accomplished. Um, the opportunities that I've gotten to meet people, go places, learn things, um, have been super rewarding. And I wouldn't trade them for anything. For Elon Local News, this is Joseph Naven and Caroline Donahue signing off. When she joins the Air Force after graduation, Ponte will be stationed in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Elon University students may have seen football players donning more than their usual pads and helmets. The football team hosted its annual Be the Match campaign, which helped provide bone marrow donations. For one student, the cause hits close to home. Redshirt freshman Will Lankford says his family has waited on donations like the ones Be the Match provides before. You know, you, you're going through days where you don't necessarily know if you're going to find a donor and you're just continuously hoping and praying for one. And um, it, it does take a mental toll on you, but whenever you find one, there's just this relief. And I think that us doing this is going to add a little bit more security in knowing that there are a lot of people out there that are potential matches for whatever you may be needing. For community members who missed the in-person drive at Elon, you can sign up online at bethematch.org. Sports fans have their favorite traditions, but one group of Elon supporters to the top, the rest. Our Max Wallace reports. How would you describe a home run? And softball is what, what, what brought us together, but we quickly learned that, that, hey, I like hanging out with these people. And I don't think you find that everywhere. For the self-named softball hill dads, they say it's the bond they have ignited from sitting together on what they call Home Run Hill. That's our home run. Yeah, honestly, it's home run hill. His parents hit the home run. It all started four years ago. What was an overgrown mound beyond the left field fence at Hunt Softball Park now acts as a man-made perk for the softball player's dad. Pretty much overgrown out here. Uh, and then little by little, we all started to, uh, our daughters really kind of, they hear everything and then bleachers from us. Apparently they got, you know, so we all kind of, you know, headed up, coming up here and we, nothing but just have a good time with these. Although the physical distance between the dads and their daughters is larger, the connection between them is stronger than ever. We're looking straight in the dugout, and we're not making eye contact with the girls, but, but they see us out here, and they, and they feel it. And a lot of energy goes back and forth across that field, and that's pretty cool. For the players, seeing the dads during the games can be the perfect pick-me-up, no matter the score. It's great. I love having them out there, and especially them being our family makes it even better. And if the name didn't speak for itself, the dads here on Home Run Hill are often greeted by the long ball. Then they send it back in a pretty creative way. All right, what? our goal is to throw it as close to the I pitcher's mound as we possibly can. You will win if it's inside the circle. The closer to the pitcher's mound is the ultimate one. 
So how would you describe a home run? It's not about how far the fence is or how hard you have to hit the ball. Instead, the dads will tell you it's not always the players who are hitting the home runs. It's the parents, too. Max Wallace, Elon Local News. The Hill Dads are at every home weekend series for the Phoenix. Despite the daughters of some of the original Hilltop Dads are graduating, the current ones say they hope the tradition remains timeless for the Elon softball community. Elon is changing its colors and going green. Details on Earth Week festivities when we come back. You are watching Elon Local News. Elon's colors are typically maroon and gold, but this week the school is going green. Today begins a week-long Earth Week celebration. From recycling tips to volunteer work this week, students have the opportunity to learn different ways to care for the campus they call home. According to the Boldly Elon Strategic Plan, which details long-term projects for the university, Elon's Office of Sustainability has multiple plans to better the campus environment, including going carbon neutral by 2037. Elon freshman Daniel Hoyle says he learned about the plan in his science class. I think it's a really important thing. Like in my science class, we're like learning about, I have to do a presentation on that type, same type of thing, like using like geoengineering to like combat, you know, carbon dioxide emissions, fossil fuels and stuff like that. Um, so I think like in whatever ways Elon could um, work at going carbon neutral would be really cool. Elon celebrations will, Earth Day celebrations will be held throughout campus this week and specific events for Earth Week are listed on your screen. Sorry. <laughs> you can find more about Earth Week on our website, elonnewsnetwork.com. That's all the news we have for you tonight. Thanks for joining us for stories, scores, and more. Visit our website, elonnewsnetwork.com. And follow us on social media at SportsCNN and at Elon News Network. Have a great rest of your week.